Hello my weaving friends, I am on the mend finally, almost starting to feel fabulous, not quite, still have this lingering cough but at least I've got my voice back now. So thank you very much for all of your well wishes, it's very nice to be loved. Anyway, we are getting very close to Christmas aren't we? And that means we start to do Christmas themed things and seeing as Christmas is my favourite time of the year, I think we should do some really fun happy Christmas designs. So first up we have some reindeer and we're going to be doing a pickup that is very similar to the brand new pickup that I had been doing in some other videos. So if you haven't seen those you might want to review them first to get an idea of what I'm doing here. And we're just going to launch straight in. What I've started with is a little border up to you whether you want to do a border or not but I've just done one pick of dark green one of red another one of dark green and then I've done four picks of white to look sort of Christmassy so row one and I'll have all the instructions for the pick up in the notes section if you can't find it please click on show more uh, row one we start with six up like so and then four down and I have to say the first few rows are really simple because they just repeat now we go ten up and four down and then we repeat that across So once you've done the first row, you'll be able to follow that for the next few rows. <clears throat> there we go. So we stand that on edge and I'm starting with brown. I've got a nice brown sort of fluffy alpaca that I thought was quite reindeerish and I've just got this on a small shuttle because I'm not going to be using an awful lot of it remove the pickup stick and beat oh did I say the heddle should be in neutral for this it should then we carry on with we always chase it up with one pick of the background yarn which in my case is the white and for me that is the up shed and we want to make sure that these two cross at the edge can you see that there they catch each other at the edge and beat that now we're back into neutral and I beat fairly firmly when I'm doing this because I kind of want those packed down Okay, so the next row, as I said, is just the same. So you're going to start by um, picking up six and then four and then ten and then four. On edge again, and now we bring bring in our brown. Pick up, stick out, beat, and now I'm in the down shed for my follow up pick. If it's loose, you can pull it through a little bit if you want those threads are crossed at the edge so I'm happy with that and beat that one now we're back in neutral again if you want extra beating here you can always um, bring in a fork or a beater and pack it down a little bit harder but I am using this alpaca that's kind of bouncy and fluffy so it 
it um, does leave small gaps in between here but you know once you get to the end you can't really see that so much because the the yarn sort of bounces up and it's nice all right so we do another row of that uh, and we're actually going to continue this until row seven so we do six rows of this same repeat okay so I think you can handle that on your own and I'll come back for row seven so your reindeer should be looking a bit like this just in sort of blocks of brown all the same and now we're going to start on the antlers so we're up to row seven we start with five up and one down and then four up one down <coughs> and then two four six seven up one down four up one down and then we go eight up one down four up one down now the easier way to do this if you want to do it quickly is the threads that are either side of your uh, rectangles they're the ones that are going to go down so if you can see that pattern as I go across I'm going okay that's the thread that runs up alongside that one so that one's going down and that's the thread that runs up along the opposite side so that one's going down or otherwise you can just count it if you don't feel confident to do it that way and I've got my little yarn butterfly here for the black black antlers if you need to know how to make a yarn butterfly it's coming in from that side um, I have a video on that as well Okay, beat that and I'm in the up shed for my background thread so that's where we're going to go next and beat that and back into neutral for the next row of antlers which is row 8 so for this one it's going to be 4 up one down, six up, one down, and then repeat six up, one down the rest of the way across. pick up stick on edge take my black through sometimes your um, stick won't want to stay on edge okay beat that and then I'm in the down shed for my follow-up thread Next row is row nine, and we're starting with three up, then one down. Um, then we have eight up, one down, three up, one down, eight up again, one down, and then we have four up, one down, and eight again, one down, four one down, eight up, one down, and repeat across. Okay, that's our black row. Eight into the up shed. Okay, row 10. 
Row 10 starts with two up, one down, and then we have 10 up, one down. Let's just check that's right. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep. And um, then we have one up, one down. And then we have the ten again. One down. And then we have two up, one down. The ten. One down, two up, one down, ten, one down, two up, one down, all the way across. Take that one through. the down shed for me. And then we're almost there for the weaving and we can embroider some noses and some eyes. So back into neutral for our last row of pickup. Three up, one down, eight up, Let's see two, four, six, eight, one down, then three up, one down, and then we go two, four, six, eight, eight, and then one down, and then we are, what are we, three or four up, let's say two, Four up, one down, and we'll repeat that pattern across. And this is what makes our antlers look more like antlers than feelers. They look a little bit like antennae or something at the moment. So I've got to go into the up shed. There we go. And while we're here, we can also finish off the border so that we've got a balanced border on both ends. So I had four picks of the white. Four. Um, then I had a green, dark green, and basically I'm just going to pull off enough of that to do two picks. One you can tuck the tail end in underneath there. Then I did a red. So I'll do the same thing with red. I'm just going to pull off enough. I only need a single pick of that. To the up shed and I'll bring the rest of that green through. Uh, 
and that finishes off my little border there if I wanted to or if I was going to do more reindeer then I'd be bringing my white back in and carrying on with that or I might just do a couple more white just to finish off that border anyway just because the contrast is so nice all right so the next part we need a tapestry needle and just the same black that you used for the antlers and a spot of red if you have it all right let's start with the eyes so I've got my tapestry needle and I've got it threaded with the same wool that I use for the antlers and I've just got a simple knot at the end I'm going to start from the back of the work and I'm going to come up in the first one just about where I think an eye should be okay and pull it through now you've got two choices here you can do a French knot or you can do a little dash if you think a French knot is a bit too tricksy then you can just try the the dash instead but I'll show you the French knot and um, you can give it a go it's it's not too difficult so we lay the needle down over the thread that's come through I know it's a little bit difficult to see because I'm doing a, a dark thread on a dark thread but I'm basically going to wrap that over there once okay and then I'm going to try and take it I'm going to keep the tension on this too here I'm going to try and take it back through the same hole or near enough to the same hole that I had before keeping the tension so I haven't let go of the tension here and pulling that through and that just gives me a little knot that sits above the surface a bit more than a dash would and because I also because I'm using this bouncy alpaca brown wool um, if I just did like a little straight stitch the eye might sort of get lost in that so give it a go see what you think okay let's, let's do that again we'll lay that down we'll wind it over once and we'll try and put it roughly back through the same hole that we came through from the back in the first place keeping the tension on this thread so pulling through from the back but keeping that tension until we get the knot so that's an eye and then for the nose what I did was I came down just around around about here where I thought a nose would be I want a nice big nose for a reindeer black nose and I do one long straight stitch and then it does get a little bit lost in there so I'm going to repeat just over the top of that stitch that I just did the same thing another straight stitch um, just so it stands out a little bit more okay um, the lights really pour in here I wish it was better because I can see the eyes and the nose okay in there you may not be able to see it as well so then we can go on to the next one and do the same thing coming up through the back and by the way if I was doing this for a, um, a woven piece that I was going to use for something I would knot that piece off at the back finish all the embroidery on one and restart for the next one because I'm just demonstrating this I'm happy to just go from this this one to this one with the thread at the back but if I um, if I was going to use it I wouldn't do that I'd knot it off because it can having the threads joined can sort of distort the piece once it comes off the loom because remember it's under tension at the moment different story once it comes off now the nose
Okay, now I'm going to move on to number three. And when I do number three, I'm going to do the eyes just the same as I have been. comes to the nose I'm going to get a little bit of red and you need a small amount of red And my red here is a little bit thicker. That's why it's so difficult to thread. Okay, I've got it threaded. Knot it in the back. As I would for the others. And this time we're going to do the nose in red because we just could not forget about Rudolph could we? Rudolph's going to be in the middle of my reindeer and we'll give him a nice big red nose so he stands out There we go, so we'll carry on across, giving the eyes and noses. And I would love to see your reindeer, if you decide to do some reindeer of your own. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.